Okay, let's look at OBDDs and QBF. So, uh, I've got a QBF here, and uh, what we're going to do is create an OBDD which represents this QBF. So the first thing to note is that this QBF is closed, uh, which means that there are no decisions to be made. So um, P, S, R and Q are all going to be changed um, their values are going to be changed by evaluating the quantifiers as we go down. Which means that this uh, closed QBF is either true or false. We don't know which yet. Um, note that we've put it in prenix form, so we've got all the quantifiers up the front, so that's important, we need to do that first, if it's not already in that form. Okay, so a bin binary decision diagram uh, allows us to tell the truth value of a formula uh, for a particular interpretation by making decisions as we look down it for each variable. Uh, because this is closed, an OBDD for this formula is going to be true or false. There are no decisions. Okay? So we've kind of got in our minds where we're going with this. We're going to end up with a uh, just a single node in perhaps a bigger uh, graph, uh, just a node, a truth or a false node, true or false node. Okay, so uh, how are we going to approach this? Well, what we're going to do is we're going to split up this formula and we're going to break it down into things that we know how to do. So uh, we've got a propositional uh, formula there, uh, which we can call F. And we know how to create an OBDD for that. Um, let's say we've got a, an OBDD within a, 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 a um, a graph uh, and f is represented by node x in that graph then we want to find uh, a node or build uh, a node in the in the graph which represents the full formula but we can't do that in one step because we don't have the uh, mechanisms to do that what we do know how to do is uh, how to take a list of uh, quantified variables either universal or existential and a node which represents a formula and create a new node which represents these things. Okay, so this is um, one of our algorithms. So we've got the for rule quant algorithm, and that can take um, a, a list of quantified variables of the for rule variety and uh, a set of nodes and produce a new node. Okay? So let's look at our formula here, or do we have anything of this shape? Well, we do. Um, and we have a big formula there, uh, which we're going to call G. Now, uh, G is of the form for all R, for all Q, F. Okay? So this, uh, we've got a, a node representing F, which is X. So this is in our format we would like, and we can just run this with R and Q in there, X in there, and it's going to pop us out a, a node, let's call it Y. Okay, so we're going to do that, or we'll do it in a minute, and uh, let's check to see where we are. Well, we've now reduced our formula, this formula up here, into something which looks like this. Uh, for all P exist as G, uh, where G is represented by node Y. So we can effectively start again. So now uh, the next quantifier in is exists, and we've got exists quant, and our uh, the variable that we're concerned with is S, and the node is Y. Now this is important. Y represents G. Yep, so we're going to run this algorithm on node Y uh, for variable S. And we're going to pop out a node which is going to be called Z there. And we've reduced this again. So let's call this H. So we've now got for all P H and we apply the whole thing again uh, for all quant p 
and two. And that will give us our final result. Okay? So it's going to give zero or one. So this is how we're going to break down this problem. Okay? So let's do it. So I'm going to rub this off, but of course you can rewind and have a look at it later. Okay, what's next? Well, what's next is to draw our OBDD for our propositional formula F here. Okay, so I'm just going to draw in those F, G, H, uh, and H's again, just uh, up the top here, so we know what we're referring to. So from there onwards, it's G, from there onwards is H. Okay, so this is our propositional formula. Um, to draw an OBDD, so ordered binary decision diagram, we need an ordering on variables. Now, I haven't written one here. Uh, in a question, you usually get an ordering. If it hasn't been given, then assume alphabetical ordering. Or you can pick one, you'll still be correct because these things work whatever ordering you pick, but it's usually best to just pick the alphabetical ordering. So that's P, Q. Yes, like that. Okay, so I'm not going to do a quick step-by-step -step, um, uh, working through of the algorithm and the notes. I'm just going to take the intuitive approach here. So uh, we can begin with P. So nice uh, P node there. Uh, so we look at the formula and we say what happens if P is false. And I take a look and I notice that if P is false there, then this bit is true. That bit is true, so the whole thing is true. So we get true. So let's put that down there. Okay. And so now let's imagine uh, P is true. And we have to now make a decision on Q. We can't get rid of uh, anything to a truth value. And uh, the formula we get is uh, Q... Okay, so now we've got a recursive case, we can ignore all of this and say we're going to start again by looking at this formula. So what if Q is false? Well, because of this side we get true, so that's nice, over there. If Q is true, um, it's not so nice, we have to make a decision on R. Yes. If R is false, then we get true. If R is true, decision on S. If S is false, so this is now not S. If S is false, we get true. Otherwise, we get false. Okay, so this is a slightly badly drawn OBDD, uh, which represents F. So I'm now going to label these nodes A, B, C, D, and F is labeled by A. Yep. Okay, so now we want to work out uh, the full quant. Okay, now some people might be stopping and going, well, why have I got R and Q in there? Isn't that kind of cheating? Well, if we look at this, um, if we swap R and Q around, it means exactly the same thing. Yep, so you might want to convince yourselves by looking at the semantics that it means exactly the same thing. But if we swap R and Q around, then they have the same thing, which is kind of the reason why we can do them both at the same time here. Yeah. Now what's, so I'm not going to write out the algorithm bit by bit here. I'm going to talk about what the intuition is. So what we're going to basically do now is we're going to copy this OBDD um, until we get to a node labelled by one of these variables, and in which case we're going to take an AND 
of everything below it. Yeah, which makes sense because we're for all. Yeah. So um, we start off. We tentatively uh, draw a P node over here which is going to represent uh, this formula. Uh, we might integrate it in later, but tentatively draw that in there. And we consider uh, the false side. And so in the algorithm, what we've done is we've gone through all our checks and we've got down to this point at the bottom where we go uh, K1, K2, yeah, because uh, our A node isn't one, it's not zero, and our maximum variable is p, which isn't in our set rq. So we're doing our splitting now. So we split down the false side. And we just get 1, because, um, well, for all 1 is 1. And in the algorithm, if you get a 1, then you return 1. Um, on the true side, we go down to this node, q. And uh, because Q is in here, so Q isn't uh, node B, sorry. Uh, B, it's not 1, it's not 0. But what it has got is the maximum variable labelling it. So we're going to explore both sides now. So now when we go down underneath here, what we're really saying is for quant 1C. Yep. C in there and a 1 in there. Now because it's um, the for all uh, 1, uh, there's a 1 in there, that's good. We're happy with that. Uh, we just effectively wipe it out. Yeah. So it's actually starting R with C. Um, so now uh, we've got the same thing here with node C, so it's not 1, it's not 0, but it is labelled with one of our special uh, variables, one in the set here, and we get empty one, D. 1 and D. And the same way, because this is for all, we can get rid of the 1. Now the reason I'm getting rid of this 1 is because it's not adding anything. Yeah, so uh, 1 and D is the same as D. Yeah, so we get D, and because uh, there's only one thing left there, um, we're going to basically just uh, return it. And what we actually do there is we split down uh, with K1, K2, with 1 and 0, and then we integrate back up, find we've got exactly the same node, and add it back in again. But I'm not going to do that, I'm just going to say we're in there. Okay, so I'm going to call this A. And now our G is represented by node E in our OBDD graph world. Okay. So we can get rid of all of this. So now what we have uh, is we have a node which represents G. And now what we want to do is find a node that represents H. And so we're going to do, um, nope, it's the exists one this time. So the exists algorithm is pretty much exactly the same as the for all algorithm, except from the base case. So I said earlier the intuition for the for all one was to copy everything until you get to a node which has one of our quantified variables and take the and of everything beneath it. Well, existential, we just take the or of everything beneath it which makes sense if you think about what existential quantification is. So we've got uh, exists quant uh, with s and e. OK, so um, we're going to write uh, a new p again. Let's write it over here. Uh, might integrate it back in, but tentatively written it in there. So we explore the false side again, where we get 1. Now let's look at the uh, true side, well, uh, with D. Well, D is labelled with S. So what we want to then... Okay. 
point is this, no variables, 1 and 0. Yeah, so in the algorithm, uh, D isn't 1, it's not 0, there's at least one node. It is labelled with S, so we can explore both things underneath it. We're going to take the OR. So what's the OR of 1 and 0? It's... One. Yep. So in the existential um, algorithm, uh, you get rid of the zero, and then if you've got a one in there, you return one. That's basically what it tells you to do. So this is one, and so this over here. Sorry, this is a solid line. This is true. That becomes eight points to one now. Um, that is redundant, so we're going to get rid of that. Don't like redundant things. And let's label one with F. Okay, so H is F. Now we've got our result. Yeah, so uh, when we do this for rule on P, uh, when the algorithm on P, we're just going to get one back out again straight away. Yeah, so I should probably have written a better QBF, which allowed us to do the last step, but it's quite difficult to come up with examples. Uh, so for rule quant P, but I mean, technically you need to do this step because we haven't quite finished with F equals one. So our result is one. Yep. So this uh, QBF is true, I hope. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so that's how we do this. So there's kind of two parts. The first part is understanding how we split up our QBF at the beginning. Yeah. So we've got it in prenex form, we split out the propositional formula and uh, split up the prenex uh, list of quantifiers into bits of quantifiers with the same quantifier um, and then we apply the algorithm for each one of those reducing it down you know, into these different things and we'll add in new nodes and eventually if it's closed we'll end up with one or zero okay so that's QBF and OBDD Thanks.